Are you overwhelmed and stressed by the size of your collection or maybe the state of your plants in your collection? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about being stressed and overwhelmed in our plant collections. Stay tuned. Hey, beautiful plant people. My name is Iana. Welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to take care of plants as simply as possible, see what plants are in my collection, unbox plants with me and other planty things, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any planty content. Hey guys, so this is kind of a spin-off or a second part series in the What Plant People Don't Talk About series. Since I got a lot of good feedback on that video, you know, concerning things when your collection gets big, I thought about another thing in the plant community that people don't really talk about. And that's the feeling of overwhelm and stress that we might feel in our very own collection. And this video was inspired by a post that I saw on Instagram the other day where a fellow planty parent posted that she hadn't watered her plants in about a week. And you know, just after seeing what happened to her plants, that she felt like a terrible plant parent. And I just, I related to this post so much because we work so hard to take care of our plants. We water them, we feed them fertilizer, we make sure they're in good soil and things like that. And it can be a defeating feeling when you see your plants not doing well. To be honest, I have probably over a hundred so plants. I'm not really sure of the exact number, but when I do have plant or two that aren't doing well, I am hard on myself. I feel like I am a terrible plant parent and I just feel like I'm doing a really bad job. And I just have to sit back and think logically, like if I have a hundred or so plants and a handful are doing terrible, I'm not doing a terrible job. It would be unrealistic of me to think that having a hundred or so plants that they would all be doing well. It's not very realistic. If I had maybe five plants or 10 plants and half of them weren't doing well, then maybe I would have to reevaluate my situation. But to have a hundred or so plants or even having 30 or so plants, if you just have a sprinkle of plants that aren't doing well, there's no need to be so hard on ourselves. You know, we can't be perfect plant parents all the time. There's things that are going on in our lives, especially this year with everything that's going on, or even in our daily lives, there's loss. You know, we have our families, our jobs, our pets. We have so many things to keep track of that we can't expect to be perfect plant parents all the time. So I'm making this video to help other people. So maybe we can all talk about this and make each other feel better. So comment down below if you ever had a feeling of being overwhelmed or stressed in your plant collection. You can start a discussion and help each other feel better and help each other just come to terms that we're just not going to be perfect plant parents all the time. Being a plant parent, owning plants, it's supposed to be a hobby. Maybe some people it's a way of life, a passion project. It could be plant therapy. It's not supposed to be stressful. It's not supposed to be overwhelming. You no, know, yes, maybe sometimes you will feel overwhelmed. You feel you will feel stressed, but if you're feeling all those things all the time, then maybe it might be time to reevaluate the way that you are having your plant collection. So first, I just want to talk about my own experience here. Like I said, I do have about 100 or so plants, and right now I'm battling thrips, which is like the worst pests you can have in your collection. It's not affecting all my plants, which is weird. It seems like they're affecting a couple plants here and there, and I've been spraying them down. I use a solution. I was spraying down with neem oil. I use Dawn and vinegar to spray down the leaves. You know, a lot of plants have taken well to my spraying and things like that. I also stick them outside to have the outside critters and insects take care of the work for me. So that's what I kind of use to battle the thrip. Having so many plants and not having a lot of spaces to quarantine plants, it could be a little difficult to just go ahead and eliminate the threat. So that's what I'm just battling in my own collection right now. So it's not really like I have so much of an overwhelm. I mean, some days I do get overwhelmed with my collection just because I have so many plants and just even watering my plants sometimes I feel overwhelmed. So it's, it's normal. If I'm overwhelmed about the maintenance and the care of my plants, I just have to sit back and think to myself, what can I do 
to make myself come back to a place where this hobby, passion, is more enjoyable. And that's what I decided. I decided to slow down my purchases or stop my purchases for this period of time until I can, you know, get back into the groove of things. Because, you know, with this pandemic, there's so many things going on. We were sent home from the office in March. So I had time to dawdle with my plants. I had time to just water them every day and put on some music. And it, it was nice just being able to take care of plants. It was like the sound of music in here. I was Cinderella with the, the birds chirping and everything. March rolled by. April, May, June, you know, you, you get tired of being in quarantine, you might get a little lazy, you don't want to deal with your plants some days. And you know, that's perfectly okay if some days you don't want to deal with your plants, or if you just take a week off and you're just like, listen, I just need a break, it's fine. Now, if you need to take longer than a couple weeks, you might have to make some adjustments because I wouldn't suggest going more than a couple weeks. But if you just have those couple of days or a week where you just, you just can't deal with your plant collection, that's totally normal. I had to do that. But lately, with this plant here, this is my narrow Adansonia. Like I said, I'm dealing with strips. It's not looking the best. I mean, it looks a lot worse in person than it does on camera. This plant is salvageable. What I'll do is I'll prune off the yellow leaves and pick off the leaves like this. I'll take some leaves off. And you see how it's already starting to look better. So this is what I'll do. I'll go in and what you could do, you could even prune it back if you wanted to. You could propagate. But you see how this section is already starting to look better. And then what I'll do is I'll tie up the, the growth that's hanging off and it'll be good as new. And I'll also go ahead and spray it down, see if there's any more thrips on it, but it'll look better. Your plants will thrive, they'll bounce back. Sometimes you'll have a plant that it can't bounce back and if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. You could replace the plant if it wasn't, you know, expensive plant. If your plants aren't doing well, it won't be the end of the world. You're still a good plant parent, but you see how it's starting to look better already and it will grow back. Things like this do happen. As plant parents, we have to be easy on ourselves. It would be like raising children. It's not gonna be perfect all the time. But just to have that mentality of, okay, I'm not going to be a perfect plant parent, but I'm going to try. I'm not going to be so hard on myself, and I'm going to keep this fun because it's supposed to be a passion. It's supposed to be enjoyable. But I'm going to give you some tips to maybe help streamline this and make it easier for all of us. Because maybe we can get tips from each other, or maybe that you know we all do different things and it might work for one person or it might work for a lot of us, but giving each other tips will really help. So I have a couple here. So first I wanna say that as plant parents, we should not fall for the hype of seeing plants on Instagram or in other people's YouTube videos. If we see a plant that we really like, but we know we are not good with, we shouldn't buy those plants. It's just that simple. Falling for the hype will get you caught up. It will get you frustrated if that plant doesn't grow well for you. And if you spend a lot of money on that plant, then you really will feel bad about it because first, your plant died, and second, you spent a lot of money on it. So try not to fall for the hype of buying some of these plants that we know we can't take care of. Secondly, we wanna be mindful of our environment and what it takes to maintain and grow that plant. If you know that plant is a highlight plant, only get that plant if you have south facing windows or get that plant if you're gonna buy extra grow lights. But if you're, if you're gonna get that highlight plant and put it in a north facing window, I don't recommend that at all. It'll just cause you extra stress that is not necessary and you're really gonna be frustrated with yourself and the plant. Have an idea where you're gonna put these plants that you're buying so that way you don't have to scramble at the last minute and decide where you're gonna put plants or have to go out and buy extra shelving because you need more space to put plants that you have purchased knowing that you don't have the space. Just have the understanding that if you buy more plants, you're obviously gonna have more maintenance and care. If you buy more plants, it's gonna take you longer to care for your plants. If you buy more plants, you might have a bigger infestation problem. Mealybugs or spider mice, they will go through your collection. These bugs fly, they jump, 
they spread quickly. So just understand that the more plants you have, the bigger potential of infestations you could have in your collection. You could try to schedule your plant care. I incorporate it into my morning routine. After I do my meditation and my yoga, you know, I get ready for work. Half of the week I work at home, half of the week I work in the office. I might not be able to do it on the days I go in the office. I incorporate my plant care into my morning routine and that's how I make it enjoyable. I put some music on and you know, I water my plants and you know, Sage is with me. He's walking back and forth. But you know, after the, about the fifth or sixth trip, he's like, okay, like I see what's going on here. And he goes into the room cause he's not about that life of walking back and forth. <laughs> but you know, just incorporate into your morning or evening routine and make it fun. Another thing you could do and what I do is I water my plants in zones. So I say, okay, I'm gonna water this section today. I'm gonna do this section today, or I'm gonna prune this section today. I'm gonna take off the yellow leaves off of this section. And I try to break it down in chunks to make it more manageable for me. Like I said, I put on music, I make myself a nice matcha latte, or I make myself a matcha tea, and you just, you make it relaxing. Maybe you could take some of your plants to your office and have some of your plants in your office space. Now don't go and make your office into a jungle like I did. All your coworkers and your boss not, might not be up for that, but you know, just take a plant or two to your office if you have good lighting there, or maybe if you take a low light plant there. Just brighten up your office space or make a little room in your own collection at home. I always say this in my videos, maybe you could look to giving a couple plants away or trade. Well, trading doesn't really help, but maybe you could trade for an easier plant. Um, just make decisions to make it easier for you. And again, I just want to reiterate that, you know, losing a couple plants here and there, it doesn't make you a bad plant parent. What makes you a bad plant parent is if you're constantly losing plants and you're constantly buying more plants and you're just going through that cycle, that vicious cycle. If you're losing plants left and right, and it's an absurd amount of plants, you really need to reevaluate what you're doing and how you're going about your plant collection. But like I said, if you're losing just a handful of plants and it's kind of out of your control, because really, when you lose plants, sometimes it's not in your control. Sometimes the plant just doesn't do well in your environment, and that's okay but you just wanna think of why you're losing a plant, why the plants aren't doing well in your collection. And as long as you're being mindful and really thinking about things like that, then you're doing a great job. It's when you don't care about your collection, when you're thinking that plants are expendable, is really when you're, you're just not being a good plant parent. So as long as you're being mindful, as long as you really care about your plants and you try to do the best that you can, that's all you can ask for is that you're doing the best that you can. If you do the best that you can, you can do anything. And that's what I really want to get at is that we're always going to try to do the best that we can. So I want to thank you guys for watching another video. You know, share this with your fellow plant parents. If you just need a pick me up or something to make you feel better, I just want to really thank you guys, so please like my videos, please subscribe. I will put up another planty comment, because I love you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.